All right, y'all, here's the beginning of chapter three. This is section 3.1, uh, A and B. So two kind of two sets of notes in one day, but with a block schedule, we do it this way anyway. A couple things we need to talk about here. First of all, functions, functions, functions. Functions have an X and a Y. And here's the thing. To determine whether they are a relation or a function, a relation pairs inputs with outputs. That, that might not make sense, but really, inputs are just plug in x, and I'm going to underline x because that's the way it works. And once you plug in x, well, you get the output, which is you get y, right? You get y. So again, a relation is given as ordered pairs, like you'll see here. The x-coordinates are the inputs, and the y-coordinates are the outputs. So a relation that pairs each input with exactly one output is a function. So maybe we should put that, each input with exactly one output. So again, what does that mean? Each x with one y. So really what it means when you're trying to determine this is you can have no repeat x values. Right? That's really what it means, because if each input is with exactly one output, if I have two different x's but with the, the same y, that can't happen. Right? So, so let's look here. So if I just am looking for no repeat x values, and I look at negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, they are all different, and so yes, this is a function. It's just determining yes or no, right? That's what it is here, yes, no, and then explain. Well, why is this? Well, because there are no repeating x values. Okay. Now, for this one, again, I look at the x values, 4, 8, 6, 4. There's another 4. I have two 4s. That means no, it is not a function. Because now I have two x values with two different y values. I have the same x value with two different y values. Can't have that. Then it's not a function. So no, and because... The 4 repeats, excuse me, repeats as an x value. Okay, that's why when it says explain, right? So like for number 5, these are x values, these are y values. Does the x repeat? Yep. There's two of them right there, so that means no 0 repeats as x value. I don't care if the y repeats, it's about the x. So this last one, which is um, just a little map, which really this means, this right here means that negative 1 maps onto 4. This means that 3 maps onto 15. And this means that 11 maps onto 15. And it gives us those points. And what I see here is no repeating x values. Again, I don't care about the 15. That's OK. I just can't have repeating x values. So the answer for this is yes, no repeat x's. Right. You can see how I kind of simplify some things as I go. Okay. Pause the video, go try the on your own at the bottom, number one through four, and then come back and check when you are done. Press pause, try it now. This has a repeating five, so no, because five repeats. As x value. This one has negative four, negative one, two, five. They're all different, so yes, no repeat x style. Uh, this one has three different ones, so yes, no repeat x value. And this one, again, this would be one half comma negative two, this would be one half comma zero, and this would be one half comma four, and that repeats the same x value three times, so that's definitely a no one half repeats as x. Good enough, okay? That's it. That's all you got to do for determining whether it's a function or not, given points. And this was all points, right? Well, there's another way that we can check it, and that's what we're going to the next page on. And it's called the vertical line test, the old VLT up here at the top. VLT, right? So what this is basically some, saying is a graph represents a function when no vertical line passes through more than one point. So if I look here, this vertical line this vertical line, this vertical line, this vertical line, this vertical line, this vertical line. I'm never going through more than one point. But here, 
I went through it twice. So even if I draw it here, I'm going through it twice. So if I go through it more than once, that means it has the same x value. This would be like x, this point right here would be like 5, 2. This would be like 5, 4. Again, it has a repeating x value. So that's just another way to say it. Let's put it over here too. Another way to say this is can't go through more than one point on a graph. Right, so if it's points, we're just looking for an x value. If it's graphs, we're still really looking for an x value. Like, look at this next one. Already, the answer here is no. Why? Well, because it has the same x value. Or we can just say, doesn't pass the vertical line test. Right? Now, for this one, look, I can draw as many vertical lines as I want. I'm never going to go through that graph more than once. Right? Sorry, i got to move that up again. This went through more than once. It did it again here too, but it only has to happen once. Right here, it, those vertical lines are not going through this thing more than once. So this is a yes, passes VLT, right? Or you could just say yes, VLT, vertical line test, right? So that's it. Try the next four, press pause, try the next four at the bottom. And really it's just about drawing lines. Press pause, try it. All right, so this one point, 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 point. I do not go through the same point. So yes, VLT. This one, it's the same thing. I can pass it. So yes, VLT. This one here, oh, I go through the more than one time in this circle, right? More than one time, more than one time. All of those make this a no, doesn't pass VLT, okay? And then for this one, yeah, that passes. So yes. VLT, okay, vertical line test, okay? All right, so that's kind of the first half of the homework, like the 3.1a stuff that you'll see on the today's assignment, okay? Um, which I might as well just kind of show you that it looks like this, right? And you got one through 11 on this page. This whole page is just like what you just got done doing. And then there's some maps, right? The maps, we just got done with the maps, right here to kind of show you how that works, okay? Here's one. And here's one. Okay, so you can check that out when you get to that. Let's get on to the next page of notes where we are going to talk about domain and range. And domain is really just the x values. And range is really just the y values. And it says input and output. Well, the input is what I plug in. So the negative 2 is what I would plug into this x value. And when I times it, I get 3 times negative 2. That's how I got 6. That's my output. So that is my y value that I get when I plug in an x value of negative 2. Okay? All right. So let's kind of take a look at what is the domain and range here. So again, domain is just the x. Range is just the y. So for this, I'm not looking for if it's a function. I'm just determining what is the domain and what is the range. And when it's points like this, it's really easy. I'm just going to create kind of a bracket here. And we're just going to fill in the x values, right? If I go to label these, negative 3, negative 2. Oh, this is negative 1, 0. This is 1, 2. And this is 3, 4, right? The domain, again, it's just the x values. So look, I'm going to just write them in order. There's all my x values. x, y, x, y, x, y, x, y. So my domain is just my negative 3, my negative 1, my 1, and my 3. Again, negative 3, my negative 1, my 1, and my 3. My range... It's just my y values. So the y values are negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. And I'm going to write them just in that order. To be honest with you, I don't really care if you write these in order. They're supposed to be in order. I don't really care. Okay. Let's look at B, which is not points. So keep in mind, when I ask you to try number 9, maybe you're looking at what I did on A here. For B, right? this again, where is my domain and where is my range? All right, so for pictures like this that end, have endpoints, what I try and do is I just try and create a box because my domain is my x values this way. So my domain is going from this point to this point. So this is negative 2, and this, of course, is 3. So all of the points are between those two numbers. So negative 2 and 3, and the x is between them. So I just fill it in like that. Okay. The y actually works the same way. I'm going to go, 
this is 2, this is negative 1, and so my range is negative 1 to 2, and again, I'm just going to put this in between them, but the range is the y, so I just stick y in between them. So the x goes between them for the x values, and the y just goes between the y values. Okay. Um, could I have just really written these points at the endpoints? Yeah, absolutely, I could have done that. Okay. But drawing a box helps. Okay. Use what I just did here to try the 9 and 10 on your own. Press pause, try 9 and 10. If you can't get it, you can just follow along, but maybe you try to do those points. Okay. All right. Okay, so the one with points again is easy if you just identify these points, right? Negative 2, 4, negative 1, 2, 0, 0, 1, 2, and 2, 4. So the domain is the x values, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. In, I'm writing them again in order. Range is my y values. I got 4, 2, 0, and then I got another 2 and a 4. Those are already existing. I don't need to write it more than once. I can write 4, 2, and 0, or 0, 2, and 4. I don't care, okay? So just all the y values. And again, if they show it more than once, you don't have to write it more than once. If you wrote 4, 4, 2, 2, 0, it's still right. You just don't have to, okay? The domain, because those cover all of the y values that are used, okay? For this one, again, I'm going to do my box it in, and this goes through 1 and 5. So my domain is between 1 and 5, and it's the x values. My range, let's see, it stops here at 4, and it goes to 0, so it's between 0 and 4, and again, it's my y value. That's it, that's the range, okay? Um, are all these things functions? Do they all pass the vertical line test? You know, yes, 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 and yes, these would all be functions, for sure, okay? All right, one more page here of notes. Let's go to the last page here. And we're going to talk about independent and dependent variables. So the input is independent. So in other words, that's the x, right? The output is dependent, right? The y, because it depends on the value of x, right? So in other words, y depends on x. X is independent of anything. So X kind of likes to do his own thing, right? In fact, we're going to write that down here. The independent variable is X and the dependent variable is Y because the dependent variable needs the X value. Whereas the X, well, he does what he wants. does what he wants. I don't know why. I just sound fun. So, so like if I look down here and it says identifying the, the independent and dependent. Again, if you remember, dependent is y and independent is x, right? So in this equation, right, we have y equals negative 3x plus 12 represents the number of fluid y, which again, y is the dependent, right? And y it is the fluid ounces of juice remaining after you take x gulps. And remember, x then would be the independent, just because of what we've already said, right? So identify the independent and vari dependent variables. Well, we kind of just did that, right? The independent we know is y, and y is fluid ounces. So independent, actually, independent, I'm sorry, independent is x. Independent is x, and we said x is gulps. So x gulps, right? The dependent is the y value. So y, let's see, ounces of juice. Let's just say y ounces of juice. Right. Okay. So if the domain is 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, well, because, again, the domain is the x, and x is gulp, so you're not going to have a half a gulp or 1.2 gulps or whatever. You're going to have either 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or whatever, right? So what is the range? Okay, well, range is the y value. Well, the y value is just the domain at whenever you plug those five values in. 
So you're going to have negative 3 times 0 plus 12. Negative 3 times 1 plus 12. Negative 3 times 2 plus 12. And so on, right? I'm going to write them all down because they gave us that many values. All right, so my range is, let's see, 12, negative 3 plus, that is 9. You see, you start to see negative 6 plus that is 6. Negative 9 plus 12 is 3. And negative 12 plus 12 is 0. So my range is just the y values. And the y values are right here. I'm going to write them in order numerically, 0, 3, 6, 9, and 12. If you wrote them the other way around, that would be okay, right? And that's it. That's, that's the idea behind domain and range. So if they give you a domain and they ask you, what is the range? You just go plug that in. So I plug 0 in here. That's what I did. I plugged 1 in here. I plugged 2 in here. I plugged 3 in here. And then I plugged 4 in there. They're all just getting plugged in and multiplied, okay? All right. So that's that. Your homework includes also this worksheet here, which goes down to that, okay? And on the back, there's one problem like what we just got done with. Look, on this problem on the back, again, it wants to know for one, three, four, and one-fourth of a day. So you need to find G, excuse me, negative two times one plus 20, negative two times three plus 20, and so on. And once you get all of these values, you still got to do the other two, then that is what your range will be, okay? I'll let you work through that. Let me know if you have any questions. That's the next set of notes. Have a good day.